Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Mandeep and in today's video, we are going to discuss K-Means clustering algorithm. We are going to do its Python implementation and um, today's uh, Python implementation is really interesting. So I would request you to keep uh, watching till the end so that you get the actual gist of how this algorithm works. So let's get started without further wasting of time. So in today's video, we are going to use this data, online retail data. And this data set is of uh, uh, transactions between these two date, 2010 to 2011. It says some UK based, uh, some, let's say on some, on some store, which sells some, something like any gifting item, something. And based on this data, so let me show it to you. This is the data. Uh, one by one, I am going to take you through this, uh, this column. Invoice number tells you the invoice of that unique identifier of that particular invoice. Stock code tells you the, um, uh, the unique identifier of a particular uh, item. Description tells the description what that item is. Quantity will tell you how, uh, how many number of uh, items were bought by the customer. This is the date, invoice date. Unit price will tell like how much rupees or dollars or euros that particular unit cost. Customer ID is unique identifier for uh, uh, a particular customer and country tells you the or that particular country of a customer. So this is the data. And today's we are going to use, uh, using this data, we are going to segment our um, customers in, uh, let's say, n number of clusters or n number of uh, uh, groups uh, using these uh, these three uh, recency frequency and monetary and if you take a look at uh, this data there is no such column which could which is uh, like uh, tells you the recency of customer frequency or monetary uh, the total amount of transaction or the uh, total amount invested by the user uh, or spent by the user there is no such column so that means uh, this is some more real life problem in and in this what we are going to do this from this data the, this given uh, csv file we are going to uh, derive or we are we are going to derive a new data set using this data and what we are going to derive these three parameters we are going to derive from the given information recency recency means number of days since last purchase frequency frequency means number of transactions done by the user or the customer monetary means total amount of transactions or total revenue contributed by that particular customer so using these three parameters we are going to cluster make clusters of our uh, customers so this is the actual problem so let's get started with it so uh, first thing first i'm just importing the required libraries like numpy panda matplotlib cbone uh, sklearn all these so this is very basic step the next uh, step what we are going to do we are going to read that csv file into a data frame let's say that is my retail data frame pd dot re read csv is the pd is the object of let's say pd represents my pedas library and read csv is the uh, method and we pass the csv file name and there are another parameters as well so now i have uh, after that using head method we can take a look at the first four rows of uh, that data this is the data and shape retail dot shape is going to tell you the shape of data like how many rows are there and what are the number of columns so you can see that 541909 number of rows are there in this data set and there are eight columns Info will tell you some more information about your data frame. Uh, so it will tell you like uh, the column name, how many known null values are there and uh, so on and so forth. What type of uh, my uh, that particular column is here. There are two, two, two columns are of float type. One column is of int type and five column are of object type. 
and then next moving on let's started with um, let's get started with the data cleaning part so for data cleaning what i am doing to i am going to calculate the missing values and their contribution in percentage contribution that means i am going to calculate how many percent of values are missing in my each column so what i am going to do retail is my data frame is null will tell me that that particular row is null or not sum will sum them up will give the total sum and after that uh, to get the percentage what i am going to do i am going to divide it by number of rows length will give me the number of rows and uh, multiply by 100 and this two is will give me the uh, you, this two is the parameter of this uh, function round that means i want values uh, up to two decimal digits so let's see so invoice number is like 0% missing values you can see that description has some missing values and customer id has some missing values so now what we can do is we we, we can delete or we can handle these so handle missing value what we are going to do we are going to drop the missing values so retail dot drop na is the method and i'm again assigning it to retail so after that you can see that how my data frame got modified and now i have 4 lakh record 4 lakh uh, record yes 4 lakh records 6 4 lakh 68 uh, 6829 records now i have now uh, next thing i am going to do is i am going to change my uh, type of my uh, this column customer id i am going to make it as a string type currently it is integer type so it's just simple for this from this data frame for this column take it as type of string type and i'm assigning it to the same i'm not creating any new copy so dow by customer id got converted to string type after that uh, now since we are going to uh, uh, do the clustering based on these three parameters monetary recency and frequency so these three these three value these three parameters are not given directly but we are going to derive from the given data so how we are going to derive so to do that monetary means what was monetary monetary if you take a look at monetary monetary is the total amount of transaction that means uh, how much uh, total money that particular customer has uh, invested so to do that this is very simple so what i am going to do for each customer i am going to check uh, like uh, how many quantity he has bought of like quantity into unit price that will give me the total of each transaction and then i am going to group by customer id so uh, that for particular customer i am going to get this data so let me tell you from this data frame retail dot quant for this column quantity and i am going to multiply it by price so this will give me the amount now i have this retail amount what i am going to do i am going to group by uh, i'm going to group it based on my customer id uh, because i want that uh, like each customer how much amount he has spent and uh, i'm doing the amount sum so that means the total amount of that and then i'm just uh, resetting the index and then if you take at a look at so this is a new data frame created rfm underscore m so this is uh, this represents uh, uh, my new data frame and it contains see you can see that each customer id and this is the total amount spent by this customer during this duration uh, this duration of time so now uh, out of these three parameters our one parameter is like we are ready with one parameter now same way we are going to derive these two information from the given data so how we are going to do this let's see after that uh, we are going to derive frequency for frequency what i am going to do is i am going to like uh, how many times my particular customer has visited so i am going to customer uh, do the grouping retail dot group by based on customer id and invoice number and i am going to make account so let's say um, if for if for my particular customer i am going to count the number of invoices so that will give me the frequency so 
I'm creating a new uh, variable or object. You can say RFM underscore F. F represents the frequency, and I'm just resetting the index. And these are the columns. And now you can see after this, you can see this is one more new data frame has been created. So now we have two data frame. One data frame is for this one customer ID and amount, and the another data frame is for customer ID and frequency. So that means now what this data frame tells me that this customer has visited thirty one times. So how I calculated it? Very simple. I calculated the number of invoices generated for this customer ID. It's very simple. So after that, uh, now I am going to do. I am going to merge these two. Uh, so to merge, we have a method merge in the pandas library pd dot merge. I'm just passing the those two data frame rfm underscore m and rfm underscore f. And uh, on which column I am going to do the merge? This is based on customer ID and uh, how tells the strategy based on inner. Inner means that means it's a kind of inner join. You can think of. So, if you take a look at the new data frame RFM dot head, you can see that this is my customer ID, amount, and ID uh, frequency. So, you can see that, for example, for this customer ID, this is the total amount spent, and this is the frequency. Like a one eighty two time, this customer has visited or has uh, did has done some shopping. The last attribute that we are going to derive from this is recency. Recency tells me the Uh, like since uh, how many days the customer have uh, uh, done the shopping? Like like fifty uh, days, hundred days. Uh, so for that we are going to use uh, this uh, invoice date column of our uh, the initial data frame, which is this one. So we are going to use we are going to derive recency from this invoice date column. So how we are going to do this? Let's see. So for recency, I'm what I'm just doing is um, I'm doing to convert it uh, a proper date time. So to do this, uh, what I'm just doing is uh, retail uh, from this uh, from this data frame. Take this column and take uh, in this format. And it, what it will do from this data frame, each entry of this column will be converted into This format and will be assigned to this retail invoice date, this new column. After that, I am going to compute the maximum date, like the last date, the last date of my transaction. Like this is my last date, so it's very simple. It will be the maximum value. Uh, so I took the maximum value from this uh, column, invoice date column, which is this one, and I assigned to this max date. After that, I am going to compute the difference between max date and transaction date. That will give me the number of days between this. So, max date here represents. Uh, you can think of that the day uh, on which the last date on which my shop was opened. You can think in that terms. So, I am going to calculate uh, the difference to calculate difference max date minus retail of invoice date. So, and I am creating a new column retail diff. And I assigning to uh, into this, and then you can see that. See, uh, there are three seventy three days and four hours twenty four minutes. So it just calculated um, the last date on which my shop was opened and the invoice date uh, when the customer did the purchasing. It calculated the difference among these two dates and assigned it to a new column and appended into this. So you can see that. Uh, this customer has done three seventy three days ago, and like this way. After that, what we are going to do is we are going to uh, kind of again do since we are doing based on customer ID. So again, I am going to use retail dot group by based on customer ID, and this difference is uh, this one which I just calculated, and I am going to take it as a taking take it as its mean value, and uh, what it will do. You can see that. Now you can see that this customer, let's say this customer, has done uh, one day ago. This customer has done shopping seventy four days ago. Uh, this customer done has done. So basically, I'm kind of finding the difference between the uh, date 
uh, the last date when my shop was opened and the date when customer uh, did some shopping just calculate the difference uh, among between these two date it will give me the recent see like how recently customer has done shopping so now to get the exact number of since you can see that this data is in form of like days hours minutes and so we do not need all these this much of detail we just only need this figure which is just before the days so what i am going to do i am going to extract only the number of days so after this you can see that see i am just picking only the days using this dt dot days after that now uh, now you can see that we have uh, one data frame this one and the other data frame we we just created where we merge uh, amount and frequency now we are going to do the same operation again we are going to merge this and uh, the data frame we created based on the recency so here it is so we are what we are going to do we are going to merge it pd dot merge rfm and rfm p based on the customer id and inner and these are the these these are the my columns and you can see that now this is the actual data on which we are going to do the uh, on which we are going to do our clustering so uh, it's a kind of something you can imagine that that data was something else and we need to do some pre processing and we want to uh, retrieve this information so we did some maths behind it and then we derived this data from that data now we are going to do further processing on this data so this is uh, the our uh, data now <clears throat> i am going to check the outliers uh, to do outliers we have multiple methods so i am going to use box plot here box plot is very simple so i am going to uh, so these are my attributes i created a kind of you know list of uh, these column names and then what i am going to do i am plotting based on the this is my uh, the figure size so basically i am telling how big my figure should be and you, box plot is the method which is used so this is my data rfm and rfm of attributes which is this one and orient is vertical of, and other values are like color and saturation and all that stuff and these are the title um, of my box plot range and attribute so this is um, after this if you will run you would be able to see that these are outlier variable variable distribution and you can see that these are my three box plot so all of these things so if you would have seen my previous video uh, you would be able to understand that how we how we read these all these uh, how we read all these box plot so to uh, do this we what we do we have the this lower line is 25th percentile this is mean or median and this is 70 uh, this is q3 uh, or 75th percentile and above this line and below this line all are outliers and these outliers are uh, calculated based on these three uh, parameters amount frequency and recency after this uh, what we are going to do we are going to remove the outliers to do that we are defining our quantile like uh, the 25th percentile and uh, and like at what number we are going to calculate our quantile so here i am taking uh, the q1 as 0 0.05 and q3 at 0 0.95 so anything below q1 and above uh, q3 will be removed so this is how it works and i am just calculating the iqr iqr is basically q3 minus q1 and then we just calculate it based on uh, anything which is uh, greater than this this value and anything which is greater uh, less than this value consider only those values so it is let me tell you rfm dot amount whose value is greater than q1 minus 1.5 of qr and rfm dot amount value 
whose value is less than q3 plus 1.5 into qr so this is the formula to calculate it q3 plus 1.5 into iqr and q1 minus 1.5 into q iqr so anything between these q1 and q3 will be uh, kept and rest other things will be removed so and those value will come in rfm the same way uh, we are going to do for recency and the same way we are going to do for frequency after that now uh, our data is almost clean now we need to do the last thing is scaling of features now you can see that amount frequency and recency these are the three parameters but these param these three parameters are on different scale so uh, you can think of that in in an equation there are three variables one variable has a very high uh, coefficient uh, but another has let's say uh, a small coefficient so while doing calculation the variable with high coefficient may have larger impact on the actual calculation so to avoid such uh, problems what we do we do the scaling so for scaling we have a standard scaler all these things are already implemented so we are just creating an object of standard scalar scalar and passing the data frame so this is my data frame and uh, i just do a scaling of it and after scaling if you want to take a look at it how it looks like so you can see that this these are the values so these values are scaled uh, on the parameters of uh, 0 to 1 Minus one to one, sorry. So th these are the uh, these are uh, scaled on a small scale. Now, next thing what we are going to do is we are going to build our model. To build our model, we are going to just create k means, and uh, we are going to do uh, initially we are passing. Let's say I am saying that I want to create four cluster. Max iteration tells me that how many iteration I want to do while uh, doing this. Uh, uh while uh, doing that uh, creating different clusters so i am saying maximum 50 iteration should be there and fit will uh, kind of uh, will train my model so i am just passing that my data set and after that if you take a look at that these are the labels that have been that are given by my uh, this labels means that since we have said that we need four clusters so it has created like so you can assume that there were 4 lakh records out of 4 lakh records it has created it has uh, created three clusters four clusters 1 2 3 4 and labeled as 0 1 2 3 <laughs> now uh, in my previous video as well i told you that how to get the right number of clusters how many uh, to get that we use the elbow method and elbow method works on the principle of uh, uh sse or ssd uh, you can say that uh, ssd is basically uh, the distance among the distance um among the centroid and the uh, that particular data point so let me tell you how it works so we are going to use elbow curve to get the right number of clusters so what i am do doing i am just creating an a list blank list and again another list which contains the different number of cluster let's say i so out of these cluster uh, 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 we are going to pick one number so i am going to iterate through it and will pass this number so what i am going to do is uh, i am going to iterate over this and let's say for uh, range and cluster and i am going to create a model and again do the training and uh will inertia will give me the uh, ssd um so and then i am just plotting it so you will be able to see that if i will uh, so you can see that ssd is the sum of squared distances sum of squared distances means uh, uh, the this uh, the distance among the data point and the centroid so you can see that this is the elbow method elbow method is what like when you can see that when my number of clusters are zero when my number of clusters are zero this has this much of a, a distance and when my number of cluster is one this has this much so you can see that it is coming down and in this we always need to find one point where uh, you can think of that uh, 
where you can think of that uh, that particular point which looks like an elbow elbow of a human so in this you can see that this is the two two is the uh, uh, number uh, sorry three is the number where it is actually creating this point so we uh, are going to create uh, three clusters so we are going to pick three so for that what i am going to do is uh, i am going to create three clusters and i am going to do the labeling so you can see that these are the labels and now if you take a look at it uh, and you can see that now you can see that uh, my this data has been divided into three clusters so this customer has been assigned a cluster 0 and this customer has been assigned one this customer has been assigned cluster 2 this customer has been assigned 2 uh, and this customer has been assigned cluster 0 based on these three columns um am amount frequency and recency so uh, if you if you would like to take, visualize it on box plot you can see that uh, see here is uh, based on cluster id and i am creating a box plot of amount so you can see that three clusters are appearing here 1 2 3 uh, so how we can read this for cluster 0 for this cluster 0 uh, the amount average amount is around this uh, let's say 500 or so and the uh, this is the q3 of that uh, for cluster 1 is let's say around 1000 and so that means average average uh, amount spent by cluster 0 uh, is this much average amount spent by uh, which the customers which belongs to customer 1 uh, sorry cluster 1 is uh, is like from uh, 3 uh, 2800 to uh, 7 7000 sort of so this is something like you can read like and the uh, for my cl third cluster the amount spent by my uh, average amount spent by my customers is like is ranging between let's say uh, uh, 500 to 1000 the same way if i take a look at cluster id versus uh, frequency so you can see that uh, for the customer who belongs to my zero cluster they have uh, average frequency uh, of let's say uh, uh, around 20 to 30 times and the customer who belongs to my uh, uh, cluster 1 they have a uh, frequency of 200 to 380 times so that means the customer who belong to uh, my first cluster they have a frequency of 200 to uh, around 380 or 400 times they visit the uh, that store and the same way you can read this uh, the third cluster and the same way we can see uh, based on recency recency is like uh, since how many days they uh, they visit again so like you can see that the customer who belong to my uh, zero cluster they 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 on an average they have range of 180 to 300 days so that means the customer who belong to my uh, zero cluster they visit my store between the range of 180 to 300 days and the customer who belongs to uh my this cluster one they have uh, more recency that means they have like they uh, around let's say 10 to 40 days so they visit uh, 40 days ago this again can validate one more thing if they are visiting more frequently that means they would be spending more time uh, so more amount so that means you can see that cluster one has more recency uh i mean uh, less recency uh, so and that means they are coming more frequently uh, you can think of that one customer came to my uh, 
two days ago and then for um, two days ago and then every after every two days if some customer is coming that means um, the frequency of that customer is high so you can see that for cluster one we have high frequency and the same way if they are coming more frequent they are spending more time you can uh, so not more time sorry they are spending more amount you can see that here for my cluster one they are spending more time so this is how uh, we have clustered these uh, this data into three uh, three beautiful cluster based on these three parameters so that's all for today's video thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for more videos and please don't forget to subscribe the channel and stay tuned for uh, more videos on ml also don't forget to press the bell icon i am working on machine learning videos and Till then, bye-bye, take care.